Christmas Eve, the 24th of December, 2021, Community Church of Syosset. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Amen. 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 God, God is with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. For to which of the angels did God say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. to the Community Church's streaming Christmas Eve service. We are delighted that you are watching us, and we wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Joyeux Noel, and Feliz Navidad. And there's one odd thing about our faith. Here at the onset of winter, we celebrate the birth of our Savior, who was probably born in the spring. But one thing we are certain of, this is the two-year anniversary of our pastor, Reverend Forrest Parkinson, whom we are delighted to have with us. So again, a Merry Christmas to all. Oh. Yay, a Merry Christmas to you, Robert. <laughs> it's good to be here. 
Very good to be here. We are prepared to let Jesus into the world and into our lives. We light the Advent candles to celebrate the gifts we are given and to name the gifts we can offer others. Tonight, we light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Peace. Joy. And love. Now we've all been waiting for the big white candle in the center to be lit. And we light our last candle to remember the birth of Jesus. We light the Christ candle to remind us that the light of the world was born this night. See the, ad, the light of our Advent gifts in all who come to us in Jesus. This Christmas, we seek to bring God's light into the lives of those around us. We with musicians today. <laughs>
those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while, while Quir, Quir, I'm sorry, Quirinius. Quir, Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. Because there was no place for them in the inn. according to Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with the child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Joseph son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived from her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Which means, God is with us.
continue our story of Jesus' birth from the Gospel of Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them. And they were, and they were terrified. terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Who is, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Lord. This will be a sign for you. And you will find the child wrapped in hands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger.
Well, another Christmas Eve is upon us. Some of us have had lots, a few of us had fewer. And always, always, we come back to the experience of a child that is born. You know, there are a few people here tonight. Uh, who here has looked at and held a baby? Oh, <laughs> a few of us. And the child is fragile, right? You know, and you look at the child and you know that it's helpless, it's little, it's frail. We all have that image. And isn't it amazing when we think about it, that if the word of God was going to come, we expect it to come in the form of a prophet, don't we? You know, and I don't know about you, but I think of prophets as being big, bold guys with loud voices or small, wiry guys that you can't put down for nothing that will face any calamity, you know, stand up to anything. Well, what about a baby? Not so much. <laughs> the little, little ones don't even... Don't even know what to be afraid of yet. And as we look at that child, if we're honest about it, we know that as much as we want to protect the child, will we be able to in the course of their lives? Come Sunday, we'll talk about, my sermon is the terrifying teens. We'll talk more about that then. But in the child, we have something else. As fragile as children are, did we all start out as children? Did we all manage to somehow make it through? Some of us live short lives, some of us live long lives, but somehow we're able to make it through. And we think about this particular child. Was he born to wealth? Was he born in even favorable circumstances? Was there even any indication that his extended family was gathered around him? This is the child we're talking about, Jesus, who came into this world fragile, in a delicate situation, in poverty, and without a whole lot of support. But then we back up a little bit. What about those rough folk in the fields? The shepherds, the disreputable types, the ones that didn't have regular jobs, the ones that stayed out all night, angel appeared to them as well. And so in our story today, even this child in its poverty and its disconnection and its oppression was honored by the rough folk of the world, the people others would not. There is some comfort in that. And I look at ourselves today, in this time, in this place, when we are now in, I'll call it our second COVID Christmas. I was hoping there would only be one, right? And we would refer to it as the COVID Christmas. Well, now we have our second one. Act two, in a pandemic. Everything under pressure. People not willing to gather for lots of reasons, many of them very good. People frightened. People who want to travel and can't. We've heard about all the cancellations of flights tonight. People can't. They plan to, and they couldn't. 
people in a state of anxiety. Has anybody driven past one of the, uh, the, the urgent care places where you get your uh, tests? Lines around the block and around the block? Worry, fear, duty, responsibility. What do we do? What shouldn't we do? Is there guidance? And do we trust the guidance we get? And is it conflicting some of the time? I think when the word of God was spoken in that day of Bethlehem into that moment of uncertainty, that moment of frailty, that moment of oppression, that moment of disconnect, can we receive the word of God in our lives in that way? Is there a child within us that can now grow, now speak, now find a new way? Did Mary know how things were going to turn out for Jesus? Could Mary see the life that would unfold? That's the thing about the Word of God. When it's implanted within us, we do not know how it will unfold. We don't know how our lives before God will unfold any more than we know about the lives of our children. We pray for it. We hope for it. We cooperate with it. We urge it. We maneuver it. We train it. We cultivate it. But the Word of God has its own life. And the Word of God is God's light. It's not our mind or our intelligence or our feelings or anything else. Within us, the word of God is implanted at our baptism by the acts of love that were given to us, by the acts of duty and sacrifice that we engaged in and that were performed on our behalf. The word of God is living and active. So for me to suggest to you that there is a particular way you must live out the word of God would be false. We know from scripture what's required of us. That we should do justice as we see it. That we should be kindly to others loving them, that we should be humble before our God, knowing that we're not only not all that, but that we are to be instruments of God's will at our best. And friends, will we always be at our best? No. So each of us has this duty as many Christmas sermons you have heard, the word of God is born within each one of us, right? On this Christmas day, I would say it's our duty, each one of us, to attend to that word that has been planted in us. How shall we live our lives lovingly? How will we uniquely in our circumstances with our understanding bring Jesus' lessons to life? How will we face the world trusting not only in eternal life, we trust, but having faith that God is truly with us and we have a purpose in this one. And so we live out our purposes. We listen with discernment. The discernment of justice. What do unto neighbors, what do unto ourselves, right? 
we also listen with the discernment of joy. What brings joy into your heart and makes it erupt within you? You know, I can't help but hear in the seasoned voices of the choir joy in singing Christmas songs even in a gathering like this with the limits we have. I can't hear, help but hear joy in Andrew playing the French horn, embarking on a career, playing in a way that sparks our imagination and helps us to share in that joy. I hope you will hear my joy this evening that even in this fragile time in the life of our church, I rejoice in service and I rejoice in all those who serve together to try to bring Christ's ministry to our community. So friends, why a child? Because a child is yet unknown. And so is our next chapter in following Jesus and sharing the life of Christ, confident in eternity and determined to love in a way that we uniquely can. May God bless you on this Christmas Eve, welcoming that word and living your life lovingly after the example of Jesus. sisters, on this Christmas day, we pray. We pray for the children throughout the world. We pray for their future. We pray for their hope. We pray for their promise. Almighty God, we pray for those children who are in difficult and dire circumstances. We pray you will gather people all around them. We pray for parents of children in dire and difficult circumstances. We pray for the parents of children who are estranged, the parents of children who have died, the parents of children who are far away, that they want to see and they can't. We pray for parents who worry for their children. We pray for those who are lonely this year. And we pray that you will send us and 
all your people into their lives. We pray for the nations throughout the world, for better government, for better law, for more justice. We pray for those who serve, especially on the holidays when they're separated from their families. From the linemen and other service workers who need to be out. We think of the fireman in his station, always too busy this time of year. We remember the soldiers and the sailors far away from home. Remember those in service to their country, those who serve their employers as well. We pray, almighty God, that those who are far from home will know something of your blessing on this evening. Almighty God, we pray for those who travel and those whose travel plans are complicated or interrupted. We pray for their safety. And in this new year, we pray for healing. We pray for the epidemic to come to an end. We pray for help. We pray that we may return to the things we love that we may abandon the bad things that never worked or hadn't worked in a long time, embrace the new things that we've discovered. We pray, almighty God, searching the silence of our hearts, searching for your voice there in the Holy Spirit for the prayers that you stir up within us, for the prayers that are secret to us, for the prayers that we have promised others. In the promise of the child born of Bethlehem, the preacher of Nazareth, the prophet who rose again in Jerusalem, we are bold to pray as that one our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. From His fullness, we have received grace upon grace. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made Him known.
everybody. Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas.